the mind spends a lot of its time talking to itself, and it can't seem to get enough of the conversation. As the Buddha said, we have our cravings as our companions, and so we talk all the time. A desire for this pleasure, or a desire to get away from that pain, our desire to comment on this, comment on that. We see it as part of our freedom, and it is to some extent the, our ability to shape our experience is an expression of our, of our freedom, our freedom of choice. But what do we do with that freedom? Sometimes we do skillful things, and sometimes we do some very unskillful things. We think we're dressing things up so they taste really good. We've got all our favorite condiments, but we can ruin things. We may have found that life tends to throw a lot of really bland things at us, and so we like salt and ketchup. And so we end up putting salt and ketchup on everything. Even when there are things that would taste a lot better without the salt and without the ketchup. You see this especially clearly when you come out to a place like this where it's really very quiet and things are just about perfect. Not too many people here right now. The weather is ideal. And the mind still doesn't want to settle down. It wants to comment on this, comment on that. And so it's important that you learn how to turn off the comments. We talk a lot about directed thought and evaluation as being an important part of the meditation. And that's because so many people think that meditation means not thinking at all. And you need your directed thought and evaluation to get the mind to settle down, to arrange things in the body. So it is a good place to stay, to so arrange things in the mind, so the mind is willing to settle down. Put a little salt and pepper on things if they need it. But there comes a point where it's just a lot of salt and pepper. You just keep pouring it on, pouring it on, even though you don't need it anymore. The Buddha says there is that pleasure. There is that sense of rapture that comes without directed thought and without, direct, without evaluation. It comes from letting these things go and being willing to put them aside. In other words, you're not commenting on things anymore. You're just willing to plunge right in. And part of the mind resists. It feels that it's going to lose control. That freedom we have to step back and be critical. But you miss out on some important things in the meditation, the really refreshing, the really stable, solid states of meditation, states of concentration that can provide a lot of good for the mind, a lot of good for the body. But it requires just stopping that the commentator, learning when enough is enough, as you said today, when you're working with the breath, getting things well. On the one hand, you do want to be a connoisseur of the breath so that you have a sense of how you can make it more flavorable. When the breath isn't good enough, what can you do with it? How can you fix it so that it is? But we're not here to have perfect breathing. We're here to get the breath good enough so the mind can settle down and stay with a sense of well-being. As John Fuhrman would say, it's like putting water in a jar. There comes a point where you can't put any more water in the jar. No matter how much more water you pour in, it's just going to keep that much. So at that point you stop pouring in the water. Just let things sit. And as for the part of the mind that said, this is stupid, nothing's happening, nothing's being analyzed, nothing's being learned, just say, well, I'm learning how to stay still. And stay, stay, stay.
because there are times when the mind really does need to rest, and it can't get the full benefit of concentration unless it learns how to turn off that commentator. You look around the breath, you've worked through the patterns of tension in different parts of the body, and you say, okay, good enough. Just plunge into the breath and leave the thinking behind. Just focus right in. Focus, focus, focus. It's not that you're going to block out other things, it's just that you're not paying attention to them. This is the point where the Buddha says the mind attains internal assurance. That you know it's okay just to focus in. You don't have to hold anything back. Tell yourself you've listened to yourself talk for who knows how long. It's time that we stop for a bit and get a taste of that pleasure and rapture, that sense of fullness and refreshment that can come when you are willing to stop the chatter. And you do this, of course, part of the mind will rebel, and you've got to learn how to resist that, learn how to stand up to it. The part that likes to comment on things. It's a good time to learn how not to identify with it. This is going to be a very important skill as you get deeper and deeper into the meditation. It's how not to identify with the part that always insists on being in charge. Because it's only in this way that you'll learn anything new. <laughs>